The weather report is sunny today on Hands On. It's back to basics on this 10th anniversary series of Hands On. Each show has a basic theme like patterns or letters, plus a basic how-to lesson on your favorite craft or craft material, like scrapbooking or clay or even wood. Each show also includes another basic, a painting lesson, from choosing paint to preparing your surface. At the end of the next 13 shows, you'll know everything about painting and be on your way to becoming an artist. So on each show, you can look forward to a basic theme, lots of projects, each with five steps and five ingredients. Keep basic supplies like scissors, markers, toothpicks, and rulers on hand. Remember, be creative and get back to basics with hands-on. Our topic today is the weather. Rain or shine, warm or cold, weather is the state of the atmosphere at a given time and place with regard to temperature, air pressure, wind, humidity or moisture in the air, cloudiness, and precipitation or rain or snow. Short term, it's called weather. Over 30 to 50 years, it's called climate. In our study of weather, our first project is about wind. We've got a wind sock that will look great on even the windiest day. Then it's our basic lesson. When the cold winds blow, you'll want a warm scarf. Kathleen Sams is here with the basics of knitting. Then it's Prudy and lesson four of the basics of painting. What exactly are the different types of paint? Then Kathleen is back with a project featuring what you've learned in our knitting basics. Last up, we're making weather tiles, one for the basic weather of each season of the year. Rain or shine, it's the perfect time to craft, so let's get started. Our first weather project is this great windsock. And look at those neon colors on the bottom. Let me show you what you'll need. First, we're using fun foam. Then we have some paint markers or paint pens. We're using regular all-purpose glue. Of course, our neon colors of plastic lacing, wood stars, some paint pens, and then our basic tools. We have a hole punch, scissor, a pencil, and a ruler. Okay, our first step is to take our sheet of foam and we're going to cut it in half. So I've taken my ruler, found the halfway point, drew a line with my pencil, and now I'm going to cut it in half. So now we'll have two pieces that we're going to join together for our windsock. The next step is to punch our holes. We're going to punch nine holes down each side of both of these pieces. Now I'm, what I'm going to do first, let me put one in. I'm putting in through the catcher. You want to get it not too close to the end so it doesn't pull out. So I'm going to do one, two, three, and then all the way down the side. So you continue until you have nine, and then do nine on this side. Then we do two on the top. You can see I'm not measuring these because I just want them generally in the same place. And then I'm going to add six on the bottom. And my catcher is getting a little full here. Let's see if we can get all six out. Five and six. Now, when you go to make your next one, the key step is to lay this one on top of this one so that you can put all of your holes in the same place. That way it'll line up. Now, I've got one that's already been punched here. I'm going to take the two pieces and lay these on top of each other so that they're overlapping. Now I've cut my green neon craft lace and I'm going to fold it in half. I have about 30 inches. So I'm going to kind of crease that a little. Then I'm going to take one side and lace it through the top two holes. Now you can sew this any way you'd like. I'm just going to do a running stitch in and out down one side, match up my holes, and pull that through. Then go up the next hole and go through both layers. And then I continue down, sewing it in and out all the way down. Then when I get to the middle, I pull back to that halfway mark where I can see my crease right here. And then I come back up the other side. And that way I'll have covered all the sections. Then I'm going to turn this around and take another piece of 30 inch and overlap that and lace it here. Then you can tie a knot at the ends and trim off any excess. So I'll put that one to the side. 
Now I've got one here that I've all laced. As you can see, I've gone in and out on both sides so that it's pretty secure. Now my next step is to take three different colors and I've chosen the orange, pink, and blue and I'm going to cut 24 inch lengths of each. I'm going to find the center and it doesn't have to be exact. Fold it through. Now you want to be really careful when you're putting this through the hole. So you don't want to tear it. I'm going to find the center, hold that loop, and then pull this through. And don't pull too tight. Now I go through and I do one for each of these six holes on this side and this. So I'm going to do 12 lengths of 24 inches each of three different colors and go all the way around. Now the next step is to take and make my hangers. So I've cut four more, or I'm sorry, three more pieces in any color that you'd like, and these are 30 inches. On these, I'm just going to thread it through, and I've got one, and I'm doing just single lo loops, two, and I'm sorry, I think I said three, but it is four 30 inch strips. And I'll add that last, and I have my green one. It's by the side. Got a piece of tape here. Now, once I've got all four of those loops through, then I'm going to join them up together at the top and just make a knot. We can look at our finished one to see how that's knotted together. Now I'm ready to decorate my stars. To decorate my stars, I've taken my paint pens, but I've done something that's really interesting. I've taken a loop of tape, fold it around my hands and around itself and set it down on a piece of scrap cardboard. Then put my star on top. It holds them in place and makes them so much easier to paint. And just put one coat on and you can let that dry and then go back. Just squeeze it and you'll get more paint and color all of those in. Then once that's done you can color as many as you'd like. We have our finished piece and we're going to attach those on. And the easiest way to attach it is using glue when you're gluing to foam, always glue on the item that you're gluing to and where you want it on the foam. And then you want to just let that sit because that's going to take a little bit to dry. The last thing that you can do is then add swirls. Any shape you want. Move that so you can see it. And you have a star and a swirl and you'll go all the way around. Now let's take a look at our finished project. Look at those great plastic lacing. You'll always know which way the wind is blowing. I'm here with Kathleen Sands of Coates and & Clark, and she is going to teach us the basics of knitting today. Hi, Hi. Kathy. Hi I'm there. glad to be here. So what do we need to get well, started? Well, today's lesson, we're going to, first of all, we need to talk about the tools that you're going to need okay. if you want to start a knitting project. All right. Of course, you're going to need your knitting needles, mm -hmm. which we have right here. You're going to need your yarn. Mm -hmm. We need a knit check, which is what I like to use for not only measuring the size of your needles, mm -hmm. but also to check your gauge. And that's something that we'll talk about later on. Okay. And of course, we'll need a tape measure to measure your project as mm -hmm. you're going along. Uh, one of the things I like to, to show about the yarn, I like using the larger skeins of yarn. Mm -hmm. uh, you can make a full project. You can get several scarves or out of just one, out of, just one, one of these skein. skeins. Yes, and they're so easy to use. This is called a worsted weight yarn. And it's a number four. And if you see here, we have it numbered on the label. Okay. And this is what um, what the old timers used to call a worsted weight. So your grandmother or your aunt or your mom might have called it worsted. We, we're calling it number four now. Okay, and that will always be on the label. That will always okay. be on the label so you know what you know what size. And I think this is really a good size yarn for a beginner to use. Mm -hmm. And it's you know it's an acrylic fiber and it's very easy to take care of. You can wash it, throw it That's in the dryer. Okay. Yeah, very, very easy to use. Um, also on here you can see how we have uh, directions on how to pull the yarn out. So you don't have to take the label off and unravel it from the outside. Oh. You simply pull that makes it from easy. the right side and it makes it very easy. Now you want to make sure sometimes there may be a little tail stuck in here. Just pull it out. Make mm -hmm. sure you know it's going to pull smoothly. Alright, now the first thing that you're going to need to do is learn how to cast on. Okay. Now I, when I'm using this size yarn, a number four yarn, I like to estimate about an inch per stitch that we're going to use on our needles. Okay, an inch so, per stitch. So yeah, about an inch per stitch and then you add a few inches just to make sure you've got enough for, okay. you know, a tail. You don't want to, you know, to, to leave it too short. So I'm just going to measure out a small piece here. And, and watch what I do here. We're going to cast on. I'm going to wrap this just around my fingers and pull a little loop through. 
So you can make a loop any way you want to, but this is a slip knot. Okay, you know, All before right? we start, why did you choose that size needle? Or this how is, do you tell? Well, the, again, this is this is a size 10. Now, normally on a number four yarn, mm -hmm. we recommend anywhere from an eight, nine, or a 10 needle. Okay. I like this size because I think it's the easiest one to really learn with. It's not too large for small hands, okay. and yet it's not too small. Okay. So it's, and it's, it, to me, it's a very good size to begin with, and it makes your stitches flow a lot smoother. Okay. All right, now, as I said, now we're gonna have we're going to put our slip knot on our needle, okay. and as you can see here, where we've got two pieces, I like to call this my slingshot. And if you look how I've done it, I take my thumb and forefinger, okay. put them between the two here, mm -hmm. and I just kind of pull it down like a like a slingshot. Okay. I'm going to take my needle over here on the far side of my thumb, okay. pick underneath. up a loop, uh -huh. yes, underneath, come across pick this up and pull that through. Drop my thumb out. Okay. And just pull. And pull it. Okay, so that's casting One on. So again, I put my fingers through here and hold the, hold your yarn okay. in your fingers like this. It, and this is going to take a little bit of practice. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've always said there's not one definite way to really hold things. You have to get your hands comfortable yourself. Mm -hmm. But this is, this is what I feel like is really a good way of casting on and, and holding things. So we're, again, we're going to hold it down like a mm -hmm. slingshot. Come over here on, on the far side of your thumb, pick mm -hmm. up this loop, come across, pick up another loop, pull it through, pull your thumb out, tighten down. That looks easy. Now we're going to do a few of them a little quicker. See how smooth this goes? Mm -hmm. So we're just under, over, under, over, pull. Under, over, I think I could do that. Pull. So there, just based on your pattern and mm -hmm. your instructions, you cast on however many stitches you need. Once you get this done, now we have some started okay. over here. Once you get this done, we're going to hold our needles like I say. I like to hold them like this. And again, mm -hmm. there's a couple of different ways, but I think this is the easiest way to really learn how. Don't hold them tight. Keep them just loose used. so you don't, you know, you're not feeling the muscles pulling your hands here. Okay, and in your All left right. hand, you're right-handed? I'm so right-handed, yes. your left hand yes. is where you're holding your knitting. Ac yes, actually. Okay. So let's, let's say, for instance, this was the one that we've cast on. Mm -hmm. We're going to hold that one with the stitches always in your left hand, and your right hand becomes the needle that you're actually okay. working with to, to create your stitches. Now we've done a couple of rows on here. What we're going to learn is the garter stitch and what that is is just knit. So we're going to insert our needle from the front to the back, you okay. see, and then we're going to take our yarn and I like to hold my yarn in my hands like this, mm -hmm. wrap it just around, it. Okay. all right, and then pull that through, mm -hmm. slide that off your needle. So we're going to do this again. Insert your needle. You're going underneath. See, see, you see your stitch right, right here? I see that. So we're going to insert this mm -hmm. from the left to the right in the front, all okay. right? Take your yarn around and over. You see how we've done mm -hmm. that? Up and over, and you just pull that through and slide that off, and you've created a stitch. This is knitting. And that's all there is to and it. And this is all there is to it. We just, see, we simply work it across the row, and once you and know the stitch, you can make so you many things. You can make so many items out of this one stitch. Now, the one thing you're going to have to learn to do also, once you've learned how to knit, mm -hmm. is you'll want to finish off your project. So you're going to have to learn how to bind off. Okay. And let me get across this row real quickly here so we can show that real quick. And again, like I say, you just keep doing this row after row after row. And, and it develops what is called the garter stitch. And if you can see here, it makes like little seeds. You right, see? and you're going to be back later in and, the show, and you're going and to tell us gonna, what we can yes. do now that we know I'm how to knit. I'm going to show you lot, you know, several okay. fun projects that we can actually make from this one stitch. Now I'm going to show you real quickly how to do your bind off. Okay, we're going to knit our first stitch. Okay. We're going to knit our second stitch. Then you're going to take the needle in your left hand okay. with your stitches on it, insert it into the back of Just the one of the, of the first loop okay. that you took off. Pull this stitch through. There you've bound off one stitch. We're going to do that again. We're going to knit the next stitch. There we go. Slide that off. Insert your needle into, into the first, first stitch, in the back loop, yeah, okay. of that first stitch. Again, slide it off. There we go. And that we're binding great. off. Okay.
Kathleen, thank you so much. This, this is, looks very easy, but well, now I'm looking forward to seeing you later in the show. We're gonna have some great projects. Okay, great. This lesson is all about paint. There's lots of kinds of paints out there, but I'm gonna tell you about the ones most used by painters and artists. Um, the first one I wanna talk about is oil. Oil paint is usually applied to canvas, and it comes in tubes. There's a few main colors, and to get other colors, you need to mix it. It's a heavy paint, so it needs to be applied with a stiffer brush, and it's not water-soluble. It's oil-based, that's the name, so you have to use an odorless turp to thin it and to clean your brushes. Fabric paint. Fabric paint has uh, textile medium in it. This makes it stick to fabric and um, makes it washable and keeps it a little bit soft. If you use regular paint on this, it would be a hard surface. Fabric paint is applied by sort of grinding into the textile. Watercolor. Watercolor comes in tubes. You squeeze it out on a palette and you mix water with it. Big brushes make washes. Smaller brushes make detail. And watercolor is usually painted on watercolor paper. Acrylic paint comes in two kinds. There's tube acrylic, which is thick like oil paint, except that it's water soluble, and you need to mix your paints to get different colors. Bottled acrylic, one of my favorites, uh, comes in every color imaginable, so there's very little mixing that you need to do to get the color that you want. It's creamy, creamy as compared to oil paint and the tube acrylic. You use a semi-soft brush with it, and it's water soluble, so you clean it with water, and you mix it with water for thin paint. Uh, you have to decide which kind of project you're gonna do and then choose your paint to match your, pro your project and your surface. Kathleen Sams is back from Coats and Clark. And now that we learned how to knit, we're gonna learn how to make things. What I've got some do? fun projects. It's amazing what you can do after you've learned one stitch. First of all, everybody's gonna learn to make a scarf. That's the first thing everyone does. And what we have right here is just a basic scarf. From what I've taught you how to do, the, the um, garter stitch, which is knitting, just straight knitting, you cast on the number of stitches that I've set in the instructions, and you just keep knitting to whatever length whatever you want. Length you need. Now, how many right. scarves can you make from one skein? Out of one skein this size, you can usually make, depending again on the length that you want to make them, I've tried to make most of my scarves at least 60 inches, so that's five feet. And that, oh, I think wow. that's, that's a good length for kids. Okay, now. Um, so you can get several. What is this? This it is. It looks like just a little It patch. looks like just a little bitty patch, a little okay. bitty square, maybe an off sided rectangle. They are going to be fingerless gloves. Oh. You've got a pair oh, there. Good. Check like this them? out. Is this not the most fun? Kids these love are these. So Aren't cute. they cool? They'd be great for boys too because they it's are. great for football or playing. Well, they so you can they catch are, ball. and I actually have um, grandsons that had me made the, the two, uh, two smaller ones, the six and eight year old, had me make some for them because they play ball outside and mm. they climb trees, and they just thought they were so fun. Well, and you and know what else too? It's got that great stripe pattern. You can use a solid or a print, and that's the fun thing about these yarns is there's so many different things. You make a belt to that go with it. That would be a great belt. Okay, now one other thing. What is this? This is a shrug. Shrugs are great. Now, mm -hmm. shrugs are like little jackets mm -hmm. that actually just sit on your shoulders, and you can make them short sleeve, you can make them down mm -hmm. to your Give wrist. And what we have here is just a basic rectangle. This one is stitch. one stitch. This mm -hmm. is your garter stitch. This is one skein of this yarn. Okay. So you know exactly how large this is. So if you want it a little bit longer, mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, you can get a second one. But it's Take it like this, fold it over with your right sides together because you're okay. going to sew on the wrong side. And for most kids, I like to estimate at least 18 to 20 inches opening in the center, center. Okay. For, for their back and their shoulders. Okay. And then you just measure up from, from the, the edge where your sleeve is, measure up to the distance, making sure you've got your 18 to 20 inches. You take your needle, isn't this a fun needle? We have oh, colored. Yeah colored acrylic oh, needles. Cute. I thought these were great. And you just match your stitches and the best thing to do is just to make sure you've got everything pinned in place. Mm -hmm. And as you can see here, you're going to match your rows and you're just going to insert. Now we're not going to, yeah, I'm not going to put the knot in there, but we're just going to whip stitch. Oh, you're whip stitching, this, over stitching. Over stitching. This is all there is to it. And you're just and you using go, a contrast color using, so we yes, can see exactly, it. Exactly, just so you can see it. And, and as you can see here, here, yeah. So it's just so stitched. So it's this just is going to be your neck collar, 
These are going to go onto your arms, and this is in your back. There you've got it. So everything was done with one, one stitch, stitch and just doing continuous knitting. And this knitting. is just the beginning of what you can do. That is wonderful. Thanks so much, Kathleen. Great. Our last project is a weather tile for each season. First, we're going to start with spring, but the instructions for the other seasons are on the website. Here's what you'll need. We have scraps of different color construction paper, foam core board, different colors of tissue paper, a two-inch styrofoam ball. You'll use half for each tile, all-purpose glue, and some glitter glue. Our basic tools are our ruler, a sponge brush, pencil, a plastic knife, and scissors. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do is to cut your foam board into a five by five and a half inch rectangle. It'd be great to have some adult help because the best way to cut this is with a craft knife. So I'm putting that down. Now I've cut a piece of tissue paper in a blue color that's a little bit larger. I'm going to dip my sponge brush and I have a, a mixture of glue with water, just about equal parts. I'm going to put a coat down on the board and then lay my tissue paper right on top. And it doesn't have to be perfectly centered and it's okay if it wrinkles. You can go back in then and put another coat of glue all the way on top. The next thing you want to do is to um, attach your grass on the bottom. So I'm going to put a little bit more glue down and I'm going to attach some green on the bottom. Again, it shouldn't be exactly perfect. You can crumble it up and you're going to layer green all the way across the bottom. And I'm using two different colors because it's the spring and the grass isn't totally in yet. I'll crumble one more up. And you'd continue going all the way across. When you get it exactly the way you'd like it, then you can add a last coat all the way across the top. Let's put one more. And you want this to extend off the side. So we'd probably add another green one on that side. The next thing we want to do is add our tree trunk. And I've cut some pieces of brown that are about four inches by about five inches. And all I'm going to do is twist those up in my hand, twist them around, and that's going to create my tree trunk. So I've got a whole handful of these here. And I'm going to twist them together in the center. And then I'm going to trim off this edge here because this is the spring tree and it's going to be covered by leaves. I'm going to dip this whole thing right in my glue mixture. Now don't be afraid that it looks like there's a ton of glue on your project. This is all going to dry clear. Once this is down, we'll go back with our brush again and put more glue up on top. This is really like a decoupage technique. Now the next thing we want to do, let me shape my tree a little better, is we're going to do our styrofoam ball for the tree. The easiest way to cut styrofoam is to take a plastic knife, you cover your work surface with newspaper or something so you don't cut into your table, and you just want to use a sawing motion and go down through the egg. I'm going to push that to the side. I've got one that's all cut here. Now I'm going to attach some green and different colors of, different colors of green. So I'm going to put my glue down first on one half and attach that down. Put another coat on top of that. Continue putting glue all the way down. Pick up another piece of tissue paper. And I go all the way around until I have this all covered. When that's all done, I'd put more glue on the back. And you can see I'm still letting that tissue paper extend off the side because when I glue it down, I'm going to come back with that next layer of glue and glue into it. Let me take you to another one that I have halfway finished here. So I've got my tree trunk down. Now you can see how it dries clear. And then you would add your styrofoam up on top. Now the last step is to take your hole punch and there's butterflies, hearts, flowers, and I'm going to attach those around. Let me pull this one right in front here. So we've got green, I've added some daisy style flowers, some tulips down at the bottom. Now, because we put layer upon layer of glue, this is pretty stuck to the newspaper. I'm gonna pull that off, and then I'm gonna come back with my scissors and trim. And that would be your finished spring tile. So let's take a look at the other seasons. First of all, spring. 
Then summer, we've added hearts and butterflies and a darker shade of green on the trees. Then for fall, we've extended the tree trunk into branches and the leaves are falling down the side. And then finally, for winter, we've added a real sparkle with some glitter glue over the entire top to make our nice winter scene. There are just so many weathercraft projects, I had to show you one last quick idea, a weather sign. Use your extra foam core board and some construction paper and you can make a sign for your door that tells the weather. And that's today's show. Next on Hands On, our theme is Art Forms. Hope you can join us. Projects and ideas for today's show are available on the web at craftsforkids.com. This show is number 1004. Hands On is sponsored in part by Elmer's Products, Inc., manufacturers of a variety of adhesives, arts and crafts, and office products for use at home, school, or business for over 60 years. www.elmers.com